Well, that was Costa Rica. Um, greetings from San Jose, which is the capital city here of Costa Rica. Uh, this is my last day here before I fly out tomorrow to Colombia. Have some more adventure there, visiting a friend, probably having some good time. Um, but yeah, Costa Rica was really, really cool. Uh, the start wasn't the easiest. Like, it's been pretty turbulent, like most of the year actually but it turned out to be absolutely beautiful. I spent three months here now with my brother and my mother going through the country, basically coming from the Pacific side over through the rainforest and the mountains over to the, to the Caribbean side. And we used to say like every day it feels more like a whole week. So the three, day, three weeks that we spent here felt like intensely long. And yeah, my travels have been quite long now with Galapagos and before that Sri Lanka. Mm. But this one's been really like blowing my mind as well, which I didn't expect. I thought like, hmm. I was going through a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, it took me by surprise. There's actually still like, just look around. It's so beautiful. Just the gardens here. Mm. Managed to get some cool interviews too. I have two ranges, that's um, Jorge, which is representing more like the rainforest section. My name is Jorge, I have been working as a tour guide for like 10 years. As well, I work as a teacher um, with the Costa Rican Public Education, uh, the Ministry, for around two years. So I'm combining ecotourism with uh, education. The cicadas are very noisy. That's only one male making the sound. And then we have Joshua, who's more like on the side of the volcanic mountainous regions. Okay, my name is Joshua, Joshua Lopez. Well, I'm a, a tour guide in Costa Rica La Fortuna. I live in uh, La Fortuna downtown. And then also a very special one, who's a little bit like my hero, or one of my heroes. This is Dr. Christina Fingner, who's from Germany, and she's a sea turtle biologist or marine biologist looking for the sea turtles here in Costa Rica on the Caribbean side on the last places that we visited. Hi everyone, my name is Christine Fingner, and I am originally from Germany, have been living for 16 years in Costa Rica, and I am a marine conservation biologist that has dedicated her life to the conservation of sea turtles. So that is what I do for my everyday life. I'm pretty much trying to prevent females from getting poached, eggs from being stolen. And then I've also been pretty active in, in the campaign against plastic. It's gonna be super hard to put like all those interviews in context. I probably won't cover all of that because it's just too much and can't keep up. Uh, this is gonna be much harder than my first project too. I'm not a professional, <laughs> just trying my best. Uh, yeah, so I have some, some cool footage for, for future projects too. But yeah, as always, let me know what you think. And yeah, I can just end with the expression, which is like named after the series and has like this big value here in Costa Rica, which is Pura Vida.
Well, North and South America, a uh, long time ago, you know, many of years ago, was separate. And then Costa Rica be uh, became into the biological corridor. Why? Because once those continents, they were separate, the lake banks, they couldn't cross by, right? From North to South or South to North. Eventually, when Costa Rica emerged and Central America emerged from the ocean, the migration started. So the animals and flora and fauna started to get dispersed from north to south and south to north. So that's why we have about 5% of the biodiversity in the world, because we have biodiversity from both, both continents. Also, uh, something that it helps a lot is that our tropical weather, it helps a lot, you know, for those alive banks to uh, live and also uh, stay in the area, uh, you know, in harmony with the, with the environment. Now we are in a primary rainforest. Uh, the primary rainforest, we have different layers in the forest. We have a canopy, we have a sub canopy, and we have the understory. Uh, one of the biggest competitions in this type of forest is the light. So the plants are competing for the light. So the, the ones that reach the canopy first, those are the ones that are going to survive. That's why you're going to find lots of aerial plants. So they get dispersed by birds, by animals, also by the wind. They get attached on the higher trees or the tallest trees and eventually they cover them and they try to uh, reach the canopy, reach the top. And as well, they are competing for the soil, for the nutrients. So on the bottom of the forest, the trees, they have a big leaf. It works like a solar panel to catch the light and as well, the soil is super poor, so the trees, they have a very superficial uh, root, but it's a very long root. This let them to catch more nutrients as possible, right? Actually, we have some species of plants that we call them the walking trees, the walking palms. What they do, they actually uh, use the root system to mobilize through the forest. They use the root system, but those are area roots. These roots, they grow above the ground. They don't grow very underneath. So the roots from one side started to spread and the opposite roots, they started to get uh, decomposed and die. And that way they are able to literally move. If you are walking along, the nature is very um, unpredictable. Sometimes you might see monkeys, you might see a snake. Uh, we have around 900 species of bird. And people are always looking for them. Those are animals that represent basically what is supposed to be.
with all those amazing animals that we saw. We went a little waterfall hopping and look how beautiful it is. Very famous is La Fortuna Waterfall. It's coming from an area, a mountain range, which is called Los Perdidos. And also it was formed by uh, uh, basically the waterfall, the wall, you can see that it's coming out of the waterfall, uh, is formed by volcanic rock. The waterfall is about 60 meters from top to the bottom. Have you ever seen a blue as pretty as the one from Rio Celeste? There are two rivers, one which is called Buena Vista and another one which is called Quebrada Agria. When both rivers uh, meet each other, the particles they ionize and then they grow. They, they, they turn heavier, they go to the bottom of the river and then by the reflection of light you get to see the coloration of the river like light blue color. But it's an optical illusion, yeah. There are only few things as epic as horseback riding in an environment like this. Seen. I have seen some capuchin monkeys. They're omnivore. I have seen them, you know, eating another animal, iguanas, basilis, and even another monkeys. You know, it's part of uh, how nature works. Uh, but they're very smart. But uh, that's that's part of the nature control. You know, the the other animals, the other species. But yeah, I have seen them. They're beautiful. And very important.